Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Okay. So I've been watching some, uh, I watched the Concord video from British Path and some other military jet videos. Was this Timberlane? Okamaru, thank you. Okay, uh, original link to the video, top of the description, right below that, link to the Discord. Would love to have you. Ah, let's do it. And this is how jet engines work. I'm Jake O'Neill, creator of Animographs, and this is how jet engines work. Most jet-propelled airplanes use a turbofan design. The turbofan can be thought of as a high-tech propeller inside of a duct called a diffuser, driven by a gas generator. Oh, 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 I missed that part. The turbofan design. The turbofan can be thought of as a high-tech propeller inside of a duct called a diffuser, driven by a gas generator. The core. The core of a jet engine is a gas generator that creates high pressure gas to power a turbine. This setup has compressor, combustor, and turbine sections. The compressor. Compressed air makes for a much more powerful combustion reaction relative to engine size. Compression happens in stages that force incoming air into an increasingly narrow chamber. A single compressor stage is comprised of a spinning rotor paired with a ring of stationary stator vanes which are attached to the core casing. Rotor blades swirl the air as they People are so freaking smart. to the core casing. Rotor blades swirl the air as they force it through the compressor. Stator vanes slow this swirling momentum in exchange for increased air pressure. The compressor has... Guys, what about before it's airborne? Like, what about when it's taking off? How is it powered then? Because obviously when it's airborne and, and you're ramming into the air, then th there's your air, your, ox your air source. But when you're stationary, you're going at a slower speed. Then how do you do it? Four low pressure and 10 high pressure stages. The combustor. Air is mixed with fuel and ignited as it passes through the combustor, releasing a jet of super high-powered gas. Question, the question, design... qu qu question. Is there a... Is there a maximum or is there a minimum amount of space that a certain amount of air can be compressed? Or is it just a matter of forcing it smaller and smaller? You know? And shown here is an annular combustor, meaning ring-shaped. Compressed air enters the inlet nozzles. Each nozzle is coupled with a fuel injector and is designed to swirl the incoming fuel and air for an even mix. A couple of igniter plugs, not unlike the spark plugs found in car engines, ignite this mixture and the reaction spreads evenly around the ring. Once started, combustion continues as long as air and fuel are supplied. The turbine. Turbines at the rear of the jet engine are powered by exhaust gases exiting the combustor. Much of the turbine power is used to turn the fan, while a smaller percentage powers the compressor stages. Turbine fins get extremely hot. Some air from the compressor is diverted for cooling, and special coatings are used to keep temperatures down. The exhaust cone is specially shaped to mix and accelerate exhaust streams. It also covers sensitive internal engine parts. Okay, so the exhaust stream. So, you know how they use old propellers on, on older planes, the propellers? And I always wondered, like, how in the heck does that push an airplane? Something as massive as an airplane. Um, but essentially, it's the same idea as a, a helicopter. Just instead of pointed upwards, it's pointed back. Or it's pointed 
forward or you know what i mean and so it is that what is powering the plane going forward or is it the exhaust that's making it go forward you know thrust or, or the fan early jet engines were turbojets where all incoming air flows through the core most modern winged aircraft engines are turbofans, where only a fraction of air enters the core or gas generator, and the resulting power turns a specially designed fan. Again, the fan can be thought of as a high-tech propeller inside of a duct. Air that does not- So it works in the same way that a propeller on a ship works. It's just instead of through water, it's through air. So this is essentially a the propeller on a boat engine. And just instead of water, it's it's and the core is called bypass air. High bypass engines are designed to move large quantities of air at slower cruising speeds, a range of about 310 to 620 miles per hour. The exchange for high efficiency is engine size. High bypass engines can be isn't 620 sort of close to Mach 1? I forget what Mach 1 is. Isn't it like 700 something? The exchange for high efficiency is engine size. High bypass engines can be very large with massive fans compared to core size. Commercial airliners or military transport aircraft are example applications. Exhaust velocity. So my big question is, is this hot stuff coming out the back? Is that simply material is that simply um like an exhaust pipe you're just getting rid of the stuff you don't want or is it used to propel the plane transport aircraft are example applications exhaust velocity is a major factor in jet engine noise high bypass engines surround fast moving core exhaust with large quantities of slower moving bypass air for quieter operation Military fighter aircraft use low bypass engines, which are more compact, have high power to weight ratios, plus supersonic and afterburner capabilities, in exchange for things like poor noise control and high fuel consumption. Afterburner. High performance engines may have afterburner capability. Additional fuel is sprayed into a jet pipe section where it mixes with exhaust gas and is ignited, producing a second stage of combustion. Since afterburner is fuel inefficient, it's generally used in short bursts during takeoff, climb, or combat maneuvers. The exhaust nozzle is adjustable for maximum exhaust acceleration and to avoid undesirable back pressure, which can harm forward engine. The exhaust nozzle is adjustable for maximum exhaust acceleration and to avoid undesirable back pressure. Exhaust acceleration, so clearly it is. Adjustable for maximum exhaust acceleration and to avoid undesirable back pressure, which can harm forward engine parts. So the maximum exhaust acceleration, meaning more thrust, right? It was a really cool video. Um, you guys know I'm I'm I am I do not know much about this stuff, but it it is fascinating to me. So I try to learn, and uh, so I'm I'm sure I sound pretty stupid to some of you, which is fine. I'm cool with that. All right. Uh, hope you're all doing well. Uh, love to see your stuff in the comments. See you guys next time. Bye.